It may come as a surprise to learn that celebrating birthdays is a relatively new tradition for anyone but kings and queens. The first people known to celebrate birthdays were the ancient Egyptians, starting around 3000 BC, but only the queen and no members of the royal family were honored. No one even bothered recording anyone else's birthdays. The ancient Greeks expanded the concept a little. They celebrated the birthdays of all adult males and kept on celebrating even after a man had died. Women and children's birthdays were considered too unimportant to observe. The Greeks also introduced the birthday cake, which they got from the Persians. And birthday candles, which may have been used to honor Artemis, goddess of the moon, because they symbolize moonlight. It wasn't until the Middle Ages that German pheasants became the first to celebrate the birthdays of everyone in the family. Children's birthday celebrations were especially important, called Kinderfests. They were the forerunner to our toddler birthday parties. Of course, the birthday song by Mildred and Patty Smith Hill, two sisters from Louisville, Kentucky, published a tune called Good Morning to All in a kindergarten songbook back in 1893. They wrote it as a welcoming song to be sung to young students at the beginning of each school day. In 1924, the songbook editor changed the lyrics to Happy Birthday to You and published it without the Hill sisters' permission. The new lyrics made it a popular tune, but the Hill family took no action until the song appeared in a 1933 Broadway play. Then, third sister Jessica sued for copyright infringement. She won, but most singers stopped using the song rather than pay the royalty fee. In a play called Happy Birthday, for example, actress Helen Hayes spoke the words to avoid paying it. Today, whenever Happy Birthday is sung commercially, a royalty must still be paid to the hills. Which is about... Um, how much is that worth? I think it's a hundred grand. Translated into at least 18 languages. Yeah. Um, first appeared in print in 1912, probably existed even earlier. The Summy Company registered for copyright in 1935, crediting authors Preston Ware Orum and Mrs. R. R. Forum. In 88, Warner Chapel Music purchased the company owning the comp only the copyright for $25 million, with the value of the Happy Birthday estimated at $5 million. Warner claims that the United States copyright will not expire until 2030, and that unauthorized public performances of the song are technically illegal unless royalties are paid to Warner. In one specific instance in February 2010, these royalties were said to amount to $700 in the European Union, the copyright of the song will expire no later than December 31st, 2016. Um, should also be noted, in the American copyright status of Happy Birthday to You began to draw more association, more attention with the passage of the Copyright Term Extension Act in 98, when the U.S. Supreme Court upheld the act in Eldred v. Ashcroft, 2003. Associate, Associate Justice Stephen Breyer specifically mentioned Happy Birthday to You in his dissenting opinion. American law professor Robert Brandeis, Brandeis, who extensively researched the song, has concluded that it is almost certainly no longer under copyright. In 2013, based in large part on Brandeis' research, Good Morning to You Productions, a documentary film company, sued Warner Pro Chapel for falsely claiming copyright to the song. I mean, it literally went, Good morning to you, good morning to you, good morning dear children, good morning to all. I mean, you can clearly look at the Wikipedia page. Hmm. Yeah, ten thousand. Yeah. 
Warner Chappell charges up to $10,000 for the song to appear in a film. Well, all I can say is, so far my birthday just today, at 38, is more than just a piece of this. <laughs>